The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Well, good evening and welcome to my state of mind here on this Tuesday evening for an original broadcast. It has been quite the week. Production schedules have been uh, interesting here for Dan York State of Mind. I was on furlough on radio last week and had a whole bunch of restrictions on my own ability to work. So we actually recorded television programs early, early in the week. And uh, then all heck broke loose in this country with the passing of George Floyd and the reaction to it, which was... You know, world event in nature, no doubt about it. Uh, This week, things seem to have calmed down just a little bit, but the conversations are very, very important. And tonight, we will have one with the artistic director, co-founder, development director, uh, a guy who I've known for a long time from the Mixed Magic Theater, Ricardo Pitts Wiley. He has a knack for being able to paint the picture, something that he's been painting for a long, long time. There's nothing new, really, in the conversation that he and I are having, but it may be new for you. Uh, This conversation was recorded yesterday in the midday, so uh, factor that into the news cycle. But when we come back, Ricardo Pitts Wiley, uh, it is worth taking notes. Please stay with us. Welcome back to my state of mind. Ricardo Pitts Wiley is my guest. He's been a friend of the program for years now. He's the co-founder of the Mixed Magic Theater. He's the development director there now. He really is the artist that brings messaging uh, that I think has been so profound for the community for such a long time. Uh, Some of the conversation that we're gonna have here tonight is uh, in many ways a replicate of a conversation that he and I have had for, for many years, uh, he sees things and, and, and sends messages about, about what he sees um, that have been, in many ways, synonymous with a lot of the messages that we've heard this week. So with no further ado, Ricardo, uh, thank you for joining me. It's great to have you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here, Dan. Uh, to say that the last week or so has been difficult would be what level of understatement? Well, you know, I might not use the word difficult as much as I would use the word revealing. Uh, uh, there are many problems that have existed for a long time. And, and, and a number of things, particularly in, in, in the last several months, have further revealed some deep divisions, some deep, some bitter truths, uh, some, some systemic problems that, that I think a lot of people would have preferred they just not been uncovered, but they are uncovered now, and they can't and and, and they can't be un you know you can't unring a bell you can't not see something anymore, and uh, uh, you know sometimes the truth. Started. Name the, name the first truth. Give me the first. There are serious and long term inequities in this country. That have uh, that that are associated with economics and racism, and and they they've existed for a long time, and and they have created problems, particularly for people of color, for a long time. Okay, give me another truth. The only way that we can change the dynamic of what's happening in the country right now is if we deal with those truths. Uh, if we look at square in the face and say, if this is the country that we're going to be, this is the country we're going to be, or we're going to change and be a better country. And I think the energy now is for a change for us to be a better country. Uh, uh, this is, this is not going to go easy for a lot lot of people. Uh, uh, people are going to resist change, uh, because it, it affects them and their world view, it affects their sense of themselves, their comfort zone. Well, you know something? The, the fact of the matter is, as an African-American, my life is more important than your comfort zone. Uh, and you can still live in comfort, but I will, if I lose my life, I don't get it back. And, and uh, uh, we're... You know, I, I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, I don't want to go back to normal. I want to go forward to better. 
And going forward to better means that some people are, are either going to have to change how they deal with the world and me and my community in particular, or the, or the world is going to probably leave you behind. And, and, and I understand that you'll probably go kicking and fighting and screaming the whole way, but you know what? I've been kicking and fighting and screaming all my life. So what's new? Well, look, yeah, I, want to, I want to talk about what some of those changes are and, and, and what you think um, a lot of the country and the community has got to accept. Um, but when you, when you talk about change, change is, is perhaps the most overused word in, 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 in American dialogue. As, as somebody who's been for 40 years talking about current issues, uh, the amount of people and politicians and, and policymakers and community leaders that have talked about change and then delivered is very, very small. But the use of the term <laughs> is very, 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 very repetitive. Here's the thing I find interesting. The virus has changed a lot of things for a lot of people from the most mundane to the most dramatic. So if there was ever a time for the kind of change, and we'll talk about that in the next segment, but if, we, if, if there was ever a time for a change of, le of legitimacy to occur, it seems like it's now. Well, the opportunity, history will show you that there's a rare opportunity for cultures to change, for to, to affect change. It, they, 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 they're very rarely planned. They're, they're very often almost, a, you know, a, by accident. Uh, nature, something in nature happens. Uh, a virus, a black plague sweeps through the continent. The flu sweeps through the world. Uh, uh, climate change all of a sudden changes the, the geographical dynamic. But but one of the things that, that, that didn't change for, for, for many people is our vulnerability. You know, people are resistant to having to wear a mask and you have to social distance and, 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 and you know, but you know, you know, what didn't change for us in that situation is the nature of our vulnerability. We, we're dying at a higher rate. We're, we're, uh, we're, uh, the, the world sees us as essential workers now, but is that essential work that has put us in the most danger? And these are some of the same people who would say that black people don't want to work. Well, you know, going to work is what's killing us. Uh, going home is what's killing us. Going home to crowded situations, uh, to lead in the water, to 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 oppressive police state activities. These are the things that are killing us, and they've been killing us before coronavirus came into, into, into the picture. Now everybody is having to deal. So hold that, develop that. Uh, Ricardo Pitch Wiley, Mixed Magic Theater co-founder, is my guest. Welcome back and have more of this important conversation. Stay with us. Welcome back to My State of Mind. Ricardo Pitch Wiley is uh, a friend of the show for a long time. He's that's talking about it, you know, what's going on. Uh, George Floyd's life lost has been dramatically, dramatically catalytically a bombshell, uh, an absolute bombshell. The behavior of a police officer who uh, has been has been just something that the world shaking its head over. We're in the middle of this COVID situation and Ricardo just, you know, just converged to major world events, which is the, the COVID virus and what his, it, it has exposed. And the Floyd lo loss of life, which is, is been a, which has been an accelerant on what has been exposed, seems to me. And, you know, I don't want to be nonchalant about his life. I have to move fast through the conversation. Would we have begun to see the realities of even what the virus can do to a community if the Floyd loss hadn't occurred? Well, um, it, 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 this 
this is due to the 19, the COVID-19. COVID-19 was showing the world something we've always known in some ways, but it was more clear. Uh, 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 there, are, there have been long-term health care issues in this country, social equity issues in this country, who's important, who's not important, uh, uh, who's actually doing the work that allows us to live the life that we live, uh, uh, and, and who is capable of making advancements. You know, one of the things that, 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 that gets ballyhooed a lot was the, 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 the low unemployment rate in this country. Well, you know something? The, uh, people could go to a job, but it wasn't necessarily a job for many people that was advancing them in any, in any way. You know, they were working jobs that were keeping them poor while it was making somebody else rich. The wealth disparity gap is real. So if I'm working a job where I'm systematically regulated to 30 hours, so I can't get certain benefits. My health care plan, if I have one, is weak. I can't buy a house. I can't buy a car. I can't send my kids to college. I can't eat decent food. But, but, but the statistics say I have a job. But what the statistics don't show is I'm not making any progress. And, 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 and it's been a clarion call for particularly people of color, but black people are the ones I'm talking about now. It is saying, it, it, it is saying you have to be a better advocate for your own way of life. You've got to be a better advocate for your health. You've got to be a better advocate for your kids' kids' education. You've got to be a better advocate for the housing situation that you live in. You've got to be a better advocate for the environment that you live in. Uh, I, I mean, part of the reason 19 is so devastating on black communities is because the environment has so crippled us for such a long period of time that we were much more easily susceptible to this condition. You know, one condition is getting old. Okay, they got hit hard. The other condition is environmental realities that have existed for a long, long time. You know, I just got a notice, in, I live in North Providence, I just got a notice in the mail saying, we are concerned about the lead levels in the water. Oh, you are? So if North Providence is concerned about the lead levels in the water, what's been happening in South Providence in the West End for 50 years. Okay. And, and do you think those things are unrelated? You see, here's the problem. We have a tendency to compartmentalize things in this country. This is, this is the problem right now, but it's not, but without dealing with the fact that it's related to the problem, to other problems, they're, they're connected. George Floyd and COVID-19 and wealth disparity and, uh, and police brutality are not disconnected they're all part of the same problem. And if you don't deal with the whole problem, you're always going to have a problem. Well, it seems to be able to deal with a whole problem without being able to, we're certainly conditioned to being able to take, you know, in all of our, you know, in all of our personal endeavors, we take baby steps and we, and we, and we, we bite off uh, as much as we chew, because if we don't, we get indigestion uh, or, or it doesn't process. Uh, there, there are things that have to be done in order to be able to make a whole situation better. Sometimes I worry about somebody as articulate as you, um, and I say that, you know, I'm not going to worry about using that term, by the way. You just are. You just want to I have a great command of language. I have to take no offense to that. And, you know, I could go, oh, you can tell black guys articulate. You know, I forget it. You know, the most articulate guys I know. You weave into a poetic um, such a poetic story that I have, I have a hard time getting my hands around. Okay. What do you want to do? Give me, give me 30 seconds on that. And then we'll develop it in the next. Segment. What do you want to do? 
I want to live my life right now, right now. I want to live free, fear, free of fear. I want to be able to have a healthy diet. I want to be able to have access to health care, the same as the president has access to health care. I think I'm entitled as much as he is. I, I want my children to grow up in a safe environment. I want to be able to educate my children at the level of their capacity. That's what I want. I want to cut my grass and grow a little garden in the backyard. I want to go on a vacation every once in a while. Uh, 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 uh. I don't want to have to scream and shout every time something happens that should not have happened. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sick and tired of, of, of every time a black man is killed, that, that, that we have to have a march, you know, uh, or some, every time something happens, we have to go back and say, we've been screaming about this for hundreds of years. Why aren't you listening? I'm sick and tired of having to make you listen. Guys, when we come back, when we come back, uh, we'll develop that thought that we're just a little bit every state of this. Colonel Fitz Wiley makes magic game. Our final segment with uh, Ricardo Pitts Wiley of the Mixed Magic Theater. Um, you want all those things. And if you missed what the things that Ricardo wants, listen, uh, watch online on WPRI.com because this show, of course, um, repeats there. You want all those things. I know the viewer and even me are listening saying, yeah, well, guess what? I've worked hard for those things. I've worked hard for those things. So, work hard for those things. Well, first of all, <laughs> the hardest working people I know are black people. I come from a family of hard workers. I come from a community of hard workers. You know, the, the, that, that assumes that you worked harder than I did. You know, when very often the case is, I had to work twice as hard to get half as much. So, so if you're equating, equating your hard work with my hard work, I would say unequivocally, I worked harder than you did. I had to. The, the, the playing field wasn't fair for you and me, Dan. It, it was never fair. It's never been fair. So I've always had to work hard. The, you know, you know, the, 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 you know, anyone who says that has no idea of the nature of hard work. Well, well, so, so, so that's the reason I, I put that to you because I, 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 you know, it's not our first rodeo, you and me. I knew that was going to be the answer. I, I, and I can't resolve this in three minutes left on a television show. And I want to have you back often over the course of this time because there's a lot of stuff that's going to have to be discussed. But the challenge I find is, is riding what I think is a, 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 need, a needable, rideable fence, which is to, 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 talk, to talk to, for lack of a better term, white America about what they don't understand without appearing like we've thrown the whole common sense baby in bathwater out. Uh, well, 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 Dan, I want to comment on this, say, jump in on that. You know, it is not my job to teach you. It's your job to teach yourself. You know, I had to teach myself how to, how to, how to, to function in this world with you. You're going to have to teach yourself how to function in this world with me. It's not, it's not my job. And if it is my job, you got to pay me. You know, and you got to pay me a fair rate, wage. The, the, other, the, the other thing is, What's so encouraging about what's happening in the last three weeks is lots of young people, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, are saying, you know something? The world that my parents are trying to preserve is not a world I'm interested in anymore because I know this person. I like this person. I think this person is being treated unfairly. And I don't have to give up anything in order for this person to gain something. 
That's a, see that, 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 that's an American falsehood. That's an American lie. That somebody is trying to take something from you that they, 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 they don't deserve. That's just that's just that's just a falsehood. People just want most of the time to live their lives free of fear, free of famine, free of worry. They want to be able to to explore the the, the greatness of the uh, of life to their fullest capacity, not your assumption of what my capacity or what I deserve, but to my own capacity. So, so in the next uh, the next time we get together uh, on the television side, uh, I'd, I'd like to have you swing by on a regular basis, even weekly, if you if you if you'd accept the invitation. I would hope that you would come to me with what the what the concrete economics are of all of this. Well, oh, that's that, that's a that's an easier answer than many things. Well, unfortunately, I only have like uh, forty five seconds. Tell me what the forty five second tidbit. G give me the tease on what the bullets of the economic plan would be to make this thing work to advance the cause you're discussing and not harm those who think they're going to, in your mind, lose something. I have 30 seconds. Can I buy a house? Can I build wealth? Can I educate my kids? Can I afford to stay healthy? And so the question that we need to answer the next time we get together is, how do we make all that work? How do we make that answer yes? Uh, Mixed Magic Theater, check it out in Pawtucket online and, uh, and, and just, just know the work being done is as important as this conversation. Ricardo, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. I want to thank Ricardo Pitts Wiley for being with us. I do believe that the economic results uh, need an economic formula. So hopefully we'll be able to talk about that the next time we get together. Um, not an easy conversation, nor a simple one. All right. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. We'll talk to you tomorrow night and uh, back on the radio weekdays, three to six on WPRO. Thanks.